Well, guys, um, we had a lot to unload last time, and so we're going to let you guys kind of ask the, the questions that you want to ask, but just to kind of bring people up to speed, um, Miang was a lot more powerful than we actually gave her any credit for. Yeah. Basically being uh, a a woman that is a servant, or a, a being made into a woman that is the servant of Deus. And Deus, again, is that giant thing in the tank that we took out when we went into the Eldritch. Uh, they've now since possibly resurrected it by feeding it our anima relics. And then we realized that Miang, again, was far more powerful than we thought, as she is basically in all the DNA of every woman on the planet. And she can then assume their bodies at any given moment. Now, the one thing that wasn't really explained is it's not like she can body snatch at will, okay? So I should probably point that out because I know that's going to be a question that some people have. She has to live the lifespan of that woman. And then she takes over. Uh, it takes over for another woman. Does that make sense, Alex? Right, yeah. Okay. So, and as I kind of hinted last time, but I couldn't really point out, uh, Miang's been involved in all of the major conflicts throughout all of history in Xenogears. Um, and I'll probably even put up some images here to just kind of show you guys. But uh, basically, it's all been to serve Deus because it needed the components that basically make up us to repair itself. Yeah. So she made war happen. She fueled Solaris. She fueled the Gazel Ministry to be able to help them out. Um, one thing that we'll actually show, and I, I love this. This is, I believe, from the, the Xenogears en Encyclopedia. Um, a faint image that you can actually see of Miang as a prominent member of the military faction in the Zebuim era. She is basically responsible for the nuclear war that ended the Zebuim era. So all of that, like the, the, the old civilization we found, she's the reason it's wrecked. Wow. So Miang's been around for a while. Uh, and you're about to find out even more as well. We're going to go into more talky bits, but let's go ahead and uh, get things started. As we get to learn the aftermath of what happened after Miang took over Ellie's body and resurrected Deus. You know, if it could come up quicker. There we go. God. The interplanetary invasion weapon Deus had awakened and its arc, Merkava, was activated. Deus began to absorb, one after the other, the mutated people destined to be its parts. While the non-mutated would eventually only become a threat to it, to exterminate us and our civilization, it set into action. The planet's surface was devastated by Merkava and the weapons born out of it called the Seraph Angels. I'm, I'm having Ava flashbacks. Or, well, actually, for me, they would not be Ava flashbacks. They'd be Xenogears flashbacks. But you, you get my meaning, right? Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, that's a lot of Seraph Angels. While pursuing the newly awakened Deus, we chanced upon Fay whose whereabouts had hitherto been lost, along with his gear Welthall, discovered together at the place where Makava was originally located. So you remember at the very end when Deus resurrected, he jumped in to save Ellie. And so they just, they went back and they found his gear. We were overjoyed by Faye's return, but it was short-lived. For some unknown reason, Faye was found in a state of suspended animation. He did not regain consciousness. The people of Shavat and we ourselves feared a relapse of Fey's, no, its power, and had no choice but to put Fey into Carbonite Freeze. Please find some Star Wars music for that <laughs> uh, future drag, could you? Like, ooh. <laughs> Oh no, I should get I should get the Han Solo love song, shouldn't I? Yeah, that makes a bit more there sense. There you go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's the one, right? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. 
Your Majesty, why do the people of Shavat fear Faye so much? Even if Groth and Id's power are comparable, it is not that we fear him. We fear the error we ourselves committed. And now we are simply trying to put a lid on it. The error that you yourselves committed. Shavat instigated a battle 500 years ago to gain our independence from Solaris. However, we became overcome with the lust for power. Fearing the war-torn people's will would no longer be with Shavat, but with the Nisan mother. And that the people would assemble under Sophia. The Council of Elders of Shavat back then made a deal with Solaris. What? Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a last minute reveal, and this is in particular part of ep what is called episode four. Is Shavat, while trying to break away from Solaris, feared Sophia of Nisan and made a deal with Solaris. Yeah. So, what was the deal for, though? A deal. Yes. At the time, Solaris, or the Gazel Ministry to be exact, were at odds with a woman who held the real power behind the scenes. Would that happen to have been Miang? Most probably it was. During the increasing power of the masses assembling in Nisan, the Gazel Ministry schemed to hand over to us their antagonist, Miang, and promised a division of the rulership over the Earth's surface. But in exchange, we had to give them the rebel army that had assembled in Nisan, and also their patron, Sophia. Wouldn't that be matron? <laughs> the leaders of Shavat accepted, and it was decided that Nisan would be the location of the final decisive battle with Solaris. Shavat did not participate in that battle. Thwarted by the awesome numbers of the Solarian army, and with their path of retreat cut off, the Nisan rebel army ran out of options and was destroyed. Caught up in the middle of all this was Lakan, Bart's ancestor Roni, Fatim for Roni Fatima, myself, and Krellian. You were also there. Yes, surrounded on all sides, we were prepared to die. And then the rebel forces flagship appeared with Sophia on board. She sacrificed herself so as to create a path for our retreat. Sophia's ship headed straight for the enemy's main ship on a suicide attack. So we actually have never found out like what happened to Sophia and now you are. This is what happened to her. She basically gave her life defending everybody from a Solarian weapon. In other words, DC Comics, she went down swinging. That's the only cutscene in all of Xenogears that gives me a headache. <laughs> no problem admitting that. Thanks to Sophia's sacrifice, we were able to survive. However, her death forever changed the fate of two men. Krellian, who followed closely under her as the leader of the Nisan sex militia, completely lost faith after calling out to, to a god that would not respond. I will create god with my own hands! Were the last words he uttered before he disappeared. And Lacan, he resented himself for not having the power to do anything while she died in front of him. So he began to search for the legendary power. Legendary power. God's resting place, Mahanan, the source of divine wisdom, Razael, and the anima relics which were created by that very wisdom. Besides these, there is one more legend. And that is... Zohar. Zohar? That has the same name as the Zohar modifier. Hmm, fancy that. Hmm. The power reactor that Miang spoke of, saying it was the infinite energy source of God, Deus. 
What she claimed is also the source of our ether powers and the driving force of all of our gears. It would have been one and the same thing. It would have to be one and the same thing. It is the place that contains the ultimate source of this world's power. It is said that only he who has the correct destiny would be able to discover its location. Losing all faith in, in humanity, Lacan sought after its power. Lacan became Groff. I mean, I'm sorry, Darth Vader. Mm. No, Groff. And the world collapsed. This tragedy happened because of the people's lust for power. I must take part of the responsibility for not having been able to stop it. And now Faye, the one who has the same power as Groff. We just wanted to seal up that dreadful power that arose from our own sinful deeds. You done goofed, Shavat. Groth, the man once known as Lacan, sought after the power of Zohar, the one who has the same power as Groth, Fay. I had this premonition that Fay too would awaken and seek out that, plow that power, and that presentiment became reality. As we are about to find out, Faye is in fact more powerful than Han Solo. Meanwhile, in the carbon freezing bay, this is very clearly before Boba Fett took him to Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I don't know how we're supposed to be able to see anything with the lighting right now, but there you go. There is Faye's carbon freeze. Doesn't really look the same, does it? Not really. No. Probably because, you know, 32-bit graphics probably couldn't do that. Uh-oh. He has a heartbeat. Where? Am I? Who am I? This is my memory? Doc. Bart. Rico. Yeah, brother! Oh. <laughs> Billy. Wise man. Groth. Everyone, my memories. Ellie? Mother? The heck? Well, this is new. The pendant is glowing very brightly. Oh, hi. Who are you? I'm surprised. That's a pretty... Oh, actually, sorry. That, that... I'm surprised. That's pretty clever. You are id? I misjudged you. I didn't expect you. The fake personality would create a fourth persona. Fourth persona? Ah, uh, we're clearly on the fifth one by this point. <laughs> persona five. <laughs> he can't feel anything. He shut up inside your ego. The pressing facts and truths you won't face. You're afraid of them, so you desired to completely shut yourself off from the outside world. And so you formed a fourth persona. <laughs> Fourth Fay, the name doesn't matter. He's the one on the stage. He's the one who's in control of our body. But it is a useless form of resistance. Come with me. Wait, what are you doing? He has the key. 
I merely want to borrow it. <laughs> I've got to go somewhere. Are you coming? Uh, or I guess it's uh, him, it might it? be it. Are you coming to? It's kind of hard in these discussions because a lot of this is going to be like a big inner monologue with Faye and Id. Uh, since, since this is Bart's ancestor, why don't you go ahead and take him? But I think he's going to probably be a lot more noble. So if you could do normal, um, <laughs> more, more uh, noble Brookstralian, then. Normal Brookstralian. <laughs> Come on, guys. Eat up. Man, those golden locks. Yeah. Actually, what's really funny is, is that if you look at it, like, in a really weird way, kind of looks like Sigurd. Yeah. With blonde hair. You haven't been able to get this kind of food around here lately, have ya? Well, this is also due to my business savvy. Uh, this is... I, I'm not even sure who he's supposed to be uh, as far as ancestors, but why don't you go ahead and take him, Alex? What's wrong, Lacan? You look kind of down. What's bothering you? You worried about something? It's nothing. I'm just thinking about pain about painting Sophia. I don't know why I agreed to do her portrait. Sophia? You mean your childhood friend who's now the holy mother of Nissan? She's not really a childhood friend. I just made her acquaintance at the monastery near my home when I was a child. She went to the clinic there for... Uh, convalescence. Convalescence. She was frail. So, what are you worried about painting her for? She does not wish herself to become a symbol of her sect. Actually, it seems she wasn't interested in having her portrait painted in the first place. But when she heard I would be the painter, she turned around and agreed. That's what I don't understand. I see. Then she must like you. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, this this conversation got very anime very quickly. That's how women are, right, Krillian? Hey, Krill! Huh? What's up? You're not having any? It's ready to eat. Oh, yeah. Hey, Krillian's got blue hair. He has blue hair. I'm <laughs> glad you noticed that. The holy mother of Nissan, huh? I should probably point out really quick, this this is episode four, roughly. Yeah. This so this was the events of episode four. Right. What are you out to offend divine providence or something, Lacan? Cut it out. It's not like that. It's not like I want a painter or anything, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> what what? I have a secret crush on you. <laughs> uh, that's You've supposed to be up a little. Yeah. What's really funny is if you look at the actual sprite and its armor design, it kind of looks like Alan Shazar from Escaflone. <laughs> Sophia first showed me that books are the best way to calm the heart. And now I'm hooked on reading. I'm not trying to brag, but I've learned a lot of things I never knew before. Lately, I've been reading this. What is it? Something I borrowed from Melchior. It's about a form of molecular engineering. Na nanotechnology. I believe it's a book found in the ancient ruins of the Zebuim civilization. It's a copy of someone's research report, but it's incomplete. I think there were even more wonderful things written in it, but we'll never know now. Wow, Lacan and Krellian were friends? Oh. They weren't evil from the moment they stepped out of the womb? What's wrong? You don't look so good. Lately, you've been seeming more melancholy almost every day. Has something happened? I don't know. I just can't paint right now. Sorry, but do you mind if we stop here for today? 
I see. It's not good to push yourself too hard. Why don't you rest up for a little while? I'll have Krillian take you. Meanwhile, even so, there was a time when I did some pretty vicious things. I lashed out at random. Everyone around me feared me, even my friends. I lived a life surrounded by people who looked at me with fear in their eyes. But she was the only one who wasn't afraid of me. So she would just smile. Just smile. Just smile, right? <laughs> Peace of mind. She was the one who taught me that what that was and how I could receive it. She taught me how to live as a human. As a human. <laughs> so I may live like fellow humans. <laughs> What are you doing, Lacan? Oh, it's you, Krillian. I was thinking I'd stop painting the portrait. Why stop now? It's the circumstances. I shouldn't be painting her at a time like this. Eventually, she too must stand at the front lines, so... Is that really the problem? The con. Her smile, it's killing me. The more she smiles at me, the more I feel my very being become insignificant. Inside my heart, there's this empty existence other than the painting. I have no worth. Wow, looks good kill. Yet, she continues to accept my presence. I feel like I'm getting smaller and smaller. Okay, do we need to stop this right here now before this becomes episode two in Anakin? <laughs> I didn't have this feeling in the beginning. I just wanted to paint her one more minute, one more second longer. I wanted to keep on painting forever, but suddenly I couldn't. At the picture, as the picture neared completion, the empty part of me started to manifest itself in my brush strokes. It was meant to be a painting. It was, I was meant to be painting her as she really is, but the picture is my own self. My empty self has begun to appear within there. That's why I've got to stop now. Your own self. You're just running away. You can't bear it when she smiles at you. By painting her portrait, you no notice the gap between your own inner emptiness and her inner abundance. And you could not fill that gap. That's why you're quitting your painting? You're refusing her. Even so, you still can't bring yourself to leave her, can you? In spite of that, why is it that she continues to smile at you? You who can't accept her feelings! You who won't accept her feelings! Tell me why! If it was me who was receiving such feelings... I sense a triangle! Only because there is one. You're neglecting yourself too much. Why aren't you kinder to yourself, mistress? That's the only get peek you get of Krellian's gear, by the way. Never see it again. This is really her true expression. Yeah, to people who don't know her that well, I guess. Her smile, I don't know. The smile in the, this picture is somehow different from the one she usually shows us. I realize Lacan's feelings are in there, but I don't think she's ever opened herself up 
shown her and herself to others like this before. You've been painting such a beautiful expression of Sophia. I just can't see the reason why you want to stop. Beautiful? Forget it. This picture is anything but beautiful. Look on, you say you're empty. Then why do you come along with us? What we've been doing up till now are not just acts of mercy. It's a fight for freedom. Time and again, you've been through life threatening situations with us. A man who has nothing in his heart could do that kind of thing, right? 